you've got to provide resources. It's about you, your utility value, your success value. And many women will be upset with your behaviour because by stepping out of the mould, mm -hmm. you can't be controlled. You can't be put into, I guess, um, you can't be made, put under their control at all. Uh -huh. Your activities are too far out there, mm -hmm. as are mine. Um, so your utility value can't be captured by another person, by a woman. Mm -hmm. You can also give these dangerous thoughts to other people, other mm -hmm. men, who might also decide on this different path. Right. So mm -hmm. in many ways it makes you a threat, mm -hmm. your behaviour over here. Mm -hmm. um, to me, when I get back home, I feel very angry because I see the way women behave in, in our society and it's, uh, it's deplorable in many ways. Yet people, a lot of people can't see it. Yeah, and uh, like uh, like we were talking about in one of the earlier segments, uh, even even over here you'll see Western women uh, treating their their men like shit. Yeah, and you know now you know you have all these uh, people around you, um, and and yet they still want to uh, treat them like shit or, or provoke them, you know, and. You know, all she's got to do is break free and yeah. and go on his own, and uh, and she's lost. You might have seen uh, in one of my videos, I, I cut in a, um, uh, I think it's called MGTOW in film, and someone put up uh, a number of video clips from certain movies which showed uh, male strength qualities, males breaking away from females and going off and doing their own thing. Uh -huh. And I think it was, um, it was an 80s film, I can't think of the name of it, but the woman's uh, looking at her boyfriend and she's saying, what about a relationship? Mm -hmm. And boyfriend's looking into the distance at, at, at something that's just really taken his interest. He's like, fuck that. Yeah. And then off he goes. And she's uh -huh. like, you pig, mm -hmm. you shit. Mm -hmm. okay? I should have done this about you. I don't know. Uh -huh. Now, uh, it's all about your compliance, right? Mm -hmm. Back home. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As long as you're willing to be the obedient plow horse mm. and, uh, and agree to be whipped, you know, then uh, everything's fine. Just like the uh, uh, the person that I was telling you about, you know, his, his answer to a perfect marriage is just say yes, dear, no, dear, and how high should I jump, dear? And you know, that's horseshit. You know, he's he's beaten already. He's already uh, given up. Yeah. So. The conditioning is strong on many, you know, to many men in the Western world. Mm -hmm. We're raised a certain way. A lot of men can't look past it. The hardest thing for many men to do is to look within mm -hmm. and to say, what values have I been raised, mm -hmm. uh, or what values have been instilled in me by my parents, by my society, by television, by popular culture? Let's list them all out and, and let's go through the lists mm -hmm. and let's decide mm -hmm. what values am I going to continue uh, taking to heart? Am mm -hmm. I going to continue acting out in behaviors? Mm -hmm. And what values am I going to outrightly reject and say no to? And that's an important exercise. I've done that exercise, and it's amazing that the behaviours that I engage in now are very different to what I did before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about Hello, Mark, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, you touched on. Um, uh, our conditioning as we've been raised, what to do, what not to do, what, you know, um, I guess you could say what traditions, you know, to follow as, as far as relationships go. And uh, uh, and it, it, it's all about, um, really like I said, being the provider, uh, being, um, uh, being subservient. And, uh, and then you look at uh, all, all the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> guess I'll try chewing the food instead of inhaling. <coughs> um, just watch TV, you know, and you'll see how men are portrayed. They're portrayed yeah. as buffoons, yeah. you know, and it's always the man screwing up, and here comes the woman to the rescue to, to bail out the incompetent, impudent man, you know. And, Which is incredible uh, when you look around society that, uh, we live in a society in which men invented the vast bulk of technology, mm -hmm. were employed in the vast bulk of uh, the, the very difficult fields of mm -hmm. endeavour, 
know, women have made some, some great strides and they've done uh, some important work over the years, but you know, the world is dominated by what men have invented mm -hmm. and produced. Mm -hmm. Yet advertising is tailored towards women. Women uh, do the vast majority of consumer purchases. They're responsible for controlling the, the purse strings mm -hmm. in the vast majority of relationships. Mm -hmm. In very rare cases, have men um, you know, controlled the purse strings as well. Mm -hmm. It all seems to be about... Those with a set of nuts, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> which is rare in this world. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, before I forget, uh, uh, I forget uh, too far uh, out of the conversation. Uh, another thing that I've noticed is... is um, a lot of the Western women here, you know, they're still bitching and complaining, just like they were home, nothing's good enough, you know, and, uh, but yet, every, every Thai lady boy that I've, that I've come in contact with, not mm -hmm. one of them has complained, not yep. one, and yep. Annie has not complained not one time, yep. the, the whole time we've been together, not one. Which is amazing, isn't it? Because we have a Western woman who has got everything in the Western world mm -hmm. and it's got a sense of entitlement despite having everything. Mm -hmm. And we have a group of people over here who in comparison have nothing. Mm -hmm. And well, they have, have to struggle for everything they want. Have to struggle, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a big wake up call I think when you come over here and you, uh, you experience this life. Mm -hmm. You see it from their perspective. And it, made, it made me very angry on my first trip back to Australia um, up in 2012. I, I've never gotten over that, that anger because every, every day I'm sort of living it out with women complaining about everything. Well, I agree. What do you think then? So what, what do you think? See, back at home, <coughs> women don't value what men think. They don't, you know, for a fact, they don't even want to hear what men have to say. You know. But, you know, we, you know, we do value, you know, what our women think. You know, and, uh, Does anybody want, uh, and this, this seafood platter is huge. It really is. I don't yeah. eat, and I don't eat fried it's food, so. Oh. Yeah. You're good, though. This is, uh, what, this is squid? Is this squid? Oh, I like it. Yeah. Give you another example. Uh, I'm in my hotel room. I'm talking to Annie on the phone. And uh, this is uh, late at night. We'd already uh, gotten back. She'd gone home, and I'd gone back to my uh, my hotel. And uh, I had said uh, said something about um, uh, you know. Um, you know, just sitting in here, just kind of, uh, you know, by myself, like staring at the walls. And now Annie was already home, probably already ready to go to bed. And yet she was willing to stop what she was doing, get dressed, and come over uh, to me just because I said, yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of lonely in here. You know, what Western woman back home would do that? That's true would do that. That's unheard of. Very true. That's how that's how accommodating you know, that she's willing to be. Yeah. You know. And you know, over here it's relatively well it's easy. If you want to get a, like a ladyboy girlfriend mm -hmm. away from the nightlife. Mm -hmm. There's ladyboys here who work in different occupations. Mm -hmm. Hotels, in restaurants 
as uh, you know, in chemists and places like this. Mm -hmm. So I know walking around here, I've seen ladyboys who I can see it in their eyes that they would be interested in me as a, uh, a you know, to be their boyfriend. Uh -huh. It's a big status thing for a ladyboy to have a boyfriend here, in, uh, especially a Western boyfriend. Is that right, uh, Annie? Um, uh, Katoya uh, uh, Western fan, Western fan, fan, fan. Um, Western fan, Dimat Mark, Samra Katoy, Katoy child, Western fan. Yes. Western boyfriend. Boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Fan. 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 Yeah. Um, so, uh, took one katoi chop Western fan. Mm. Okay, honestly, uh, yeah, I feel. Yeah. 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 In America, so uh, let's say uh, my die, uh, my die, Katoi and I USA uh, midnight. Um, but um, that's, that's why a guy came here. Well, I feel very, very fortunate that uh, that any of you know take uh, have an interest in me. So, I mean, it's, um, cow kid, cow chop di, ga kun chop cow. I'm a little. It's good. The food be good. Yes. Good thing come. Yes. Yeah, important. I mean, I was amazed when I came here the first time. I was shocked. I didn't. I just did not understand that how well I would be treated over here. Mm -hmm. And I knew it wasn't. It wasn't all about the money. Right. It wasn't. It just it's, wasn't uh, like that. It's not phony. And uh, now, with some people, it may be. You know. Uh, yeah. If the money runs out, you know, then they may not have an interest. You know, that's anywhere. But. Uh, but no, I, I get a very uh, genuine feeling that, you know, that it's, uh, you know, now, if that you, it, if it's you real. Think, you if know. you think about it, right, mm -hmm. in the Western world, mm -hmm. we have a situation where women have gained a lot of power, a lot of control. Uh, we have great level of technology, society, societal development, mm -hmm. and Western women are in a very privileged position. Men are constantly chasing after them, even if they're overweight, unattractive, older. Nah. Um, yeah, life's too short. Yeah. yeah. But, but us men, we don't really have uh, the power uh, mm -hmm. back home. Mm -hmm. Now, if we come over to a, a developing country, we do have that power again, because mm -hmm. our money buys more here, and the technology and societal development is less, mm -hmm. and we can live true to our male natures. Mm -hmm. And there's something very intoxicating about that. I know if I could, I would stay over here full time. Well, I could no. I would stay over here part time, maybe half of the year, because I think it's uh, it's very hard to work out in the weather here. That, I need some kind of. Uh, it, is, it is hot. It mm -hmm. really is hot. <laughs> but I think, uh, you, would, Tim, you would acclimate very quickly, though. Yeah, yeah. Tim Sharkey Ward. I think he's got the right approach. He uh, he holidays between. He lives between Australia and uh, and, and Thailand, mm -hmm. and that's the way he manages it. I mean, let, let's look at the situation rationally, right? Mm -hmm. So, you're 53 years old, you're uh, from a, your background and your status, uh, and I guess your power. If we were talking about relationships with women, 
who do you think that you would be, who is available to you back in the Western world? Like what Western woman is available to, to you in general? So if you had to generalize about it, so, um, you know, are uh, we, well, no, I hadn't really thought of it like that. So um, let's think about it from a Western woman's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're a 53 year old man, you've got your shit together, mm -hmm. you've, got, uh, you've got your resources, you've got uh, your job, You've got um, you know, your education, you've got your background, you've got your skills, and you've got it together, right? Mm -hmm. Now, back home, the kind of Western woman who would who would be looking up to you, what type of Western woman are we are we talking uh, about? Not. <laughs> no, I, I honestly, um, um, so would you describe would, yourself? Would, would, uh, uh, would I see any uh, Western woman as looking up to me? Uh, no, I honestly, I don't think Western women look up to anybody except Western women. And uh, uh, so I think it's only, you know, they look at, you know, uh, how, you know how much can somebody provide yeah. or whether they're actually, you know, looking up to them or not. I don't think so. Well, I guess um, from where I'm coming from, I'm sort of thinking that, okay, so, would you categorize yourself as a, as a middle class guy, an average guy? Middle, middle in class, America? yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So we know that women marry up and they're looking up to higher status men. Uh -huh. So by that very, uh, I guess, uh, description, um, you, the only woman that would be available to you would be a woman looking up to you, mm. which would be a below average woman. <laughs> so. A below average woman, what are we talking about? We'd be talking about... You know who uh, looks up, you know who looks up? Uh, the people in the USA, welfare recipients. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That, that, well, that, that, that's a good example yeah. because I mean, um, if you were to find your equal in in the USA, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that that would be very difficult for you to do. I mean, you'd be looking at age parity. So a 53 year old woman mm -hmm. who owns her own home, has got a middle class uh, uh, life, mm -hmm. and is earning a similar uh, amount. So she would probably be divorced or separated. She'd have a couple of kids, uh -huh. um, maybe more than a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. It'd be rare to find a woman who stayed childless. Oh yeah. So uh, these would be the, the the market of available women that, mm -hmm. that would be going for you. Mm -hmm. Now we know the male sex drive and the male desire is focused on younger women, uh, younger partners. Statistically speaking, uh, men will have a younger partner by probably between seven to ten years. Mm -hmm. Now, if you looked at that age group, let's say you're looking at a 43-year-old woman, mm -hmm. uh, do you find 43-year-old women attractive? Do you find... Uh, no. No. Mm -hmm. No, because usually by that time, um, uh, when, a, when a woman has hit her, her 40s, uh, most of the time uh, they've let themselves go so so bad or you know let them uh, solves go yep. physically uh yep. so far that yep. um so a lot of them are overweight yeah uh uh yeah uh, uh, a lot of them just physically just Since. yeah they, they they're just no longer uh really attractive that now you know i'm going in the wrong you know there are some you know 40 year old you know women or, or more you know that are very attractive are they available uh, to you no no, they're all they're all looking for um, yeah the higher status or yeah. You know, uh -huh. So it all. would be fair to say that as a woman ages, mm -hmm. uh, she has less of what we want or that we look to, uh, look for in a woman, whilst we have more of what she wants. We have more resources, more power, more status, more security, more money. Um, so we have a mismatch and uh, what we do as men, we come over here to the developing world to mm -hmm. find younger partners. Mm -hmm. um, your, par uh, your partner at the moment, you're taking out Annie. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie, how old, how old are you? Um, this year, 30. 30 this year? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a 23 year age gap between uh, the two of you. She certainly doesn't look 30, does she? No. Yeah. No, I was, no, no, I, was, I was guessing maybe 22, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah early 20s, I would have mm -hmm. thought. Yeah. 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 And uh, looking around here, uh, it should be pointed out that you and I are not isolated cases. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, you and I uh, go out with lady boys, uh -huh. but 
when we look around Patea, we see predominantly older men with younger women, or younger lady boys, or in some 